Well, hi, and another warm welcome to another edition of Testimony Time here on Revelation TV. My name's Anne Dawson, and in the studio with me this evening here to give his testimony as to how he came to the Lord and what the Lord has subsequently done in his life, we've got Paul Murphy. And Paul, lovely to have you here. Oh, thank you very Thank much. you so much for coming. Uh, you've travelled from Harrogate, which is a, yeah, yeah. a beautiful, beautiful part of the world. Um, and you've been watching... Revelation TV poll for um, many years, yeah, so you're yeah. familiar with the fact that testimony time is fantastic yeah, because yeah. It gives us an opportunity to find out what God is doing out there and the lives that He's changing. Yeah, yeah. And I have to say, looking at what you've sent me in, it sounds like He's been pretty busy here. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, he's been using me. <laughs> well, let's go back to the beginning. Tell us a little bit about before coming to the Lord. So, what life looked like intrinsically growing up? Yeah. Was it a church family? Mm. And really, the the sequence of events that led you to meet with the Lord Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, well, I was I had a, a really fantastic childhood, uh, and I was brought up in a Christian family. Uh, I went to church, I went to youth, and uh, uh, I, did, I had a great time. Um, I, I knew I'd, I knew the Lord, and I'd um, uh, I'd experienced Him, but not to a level where it's been more recently. Um, but um, so as I was brought up, um, I got married, and uh, unfortunately, that the, the divorce came in that. And uh, but God's been good in the divorce, and he's, you know He's looked after us all. Um, and, and it was actually the, the trauma of the divorce yeah. that kind of led you down. A different path, maybe yeah. some would say a path away from God. Yeah, I kind of, and I really started to struggle with it all. And I knew there was a God, but I didn't feel connected to Him or in a real relationship with God. Um, so I still went to church every Sunday, uh, just because I felt I should. Um, so it was duty. Yeah, it was duty. Yeah, but um, but then the rest of the week I'd spend it in the pubs, drinking, um, meeting girls. Uh, and there was like drugs around me. I never did drugs, but it was all around me. But uh, how old were you at this stage, Paul? Um, I think I was, you know, maybe thirty, uh, thirty-five, in like that. So and and over what period of time did this last? So it lasted the... for about seven years right. of, um, of of all this, um, while still going to church on a Sunday. Um, so I'd be out Saturday night going to church Sunday morning and um, my family, especially my mother, she could see all this and she used to pray for me and she'd come and I could tell she was upset watching her son being in the state it was in. Um, but she kept praying for me. And um, so what's one Saturday night I went out and I got really drunk. Um, but my vicar had asked me if I'd play at the front of church the Sunday morning. So I turned up to church Hung over. Hung over. And I played at the front of church and I was looking out to the congregation of maybe a hundred people, um, with a haze in front of my face and it actually it, it really shook me afterwards and I thought, How has it got to this? How has so it, did you how's feel it a got? sense was it a sense of guilt that you felt? Yeah, I just thought how how have I got to this point where I'll do that? You know, I'll go out and then I'll go to a church next morning and play. Um, and I really felt that things had to change. So um, I decided to join a Christian online dating site. Okay. Because I thought, well, I need some good influence in my life and uh, to meet somebody maybe, and I, I weren't sure. And, um, so anyway, so I actually met someone. And this woman was filled with Holy Spirit. I mean, she was... Uh, I really met my match. <laughs> and um, so she came up um, and she... Uh, I was selling my wares, saying I'm a musician and I do this and I do this. And I had no relationship with God at this time. I was just kind of... You know, so you were on... Just to recap there, you were on yeah. a Christian dating yeah. website yeah. but you wouldn't have considered yourself a Christian um, you, you I, had a belief in I, God I had a belief in God and I wanted some good influence in my life 
did you did you know that you weren't can if you know what I mean? Did you know that you weren't connected to God at this time, or did you think nobody was really connected and that this yeah, was normal? I just thought that's the kind of normal, to be honest. Right. Uh, okay. Um, I thought some lucky people are a lot closer to God than I am, but uh, you know, that's but it, just, that just, wasn't for everybody. It, it that wasn't was just for everybody. Yeah. yeah. So um, as I joined this site, uh, we decided to meet. Um, and it's very interesting because I was very specific to God and I said to God, uh, if, you, if you're real, then let this person be hippie style. And I even said what I'd like just to meet. And actually the person I met was exactly that. But um, when, when we met, um, she, she said, I see a, a man in rags. Uh, God spoke to her and uh, saw a man in rags as I was selling my wares and saying how confident I were. She and says, God told me, and... Yeah, she says, God has told me that, uh, assured me that you're a man in rags, but you won't be. Anyway, so I, I didn't really, I just said, yeah, okay, whatever. Anyway, How did you react to that? So I mean... I, actually, inside, yes. I knew exactly what she was saying. And you knew that but was true. But outside, yeah. I was saying, mm, no, you know. Mm. But inside, I knew exactly. So she went back home anyway. God spoke to her and said, I want you to fast and pray for that man. Wow. For two, I think it was a month, something like that. And she was obedient to that. And she says, and if you do, I will invade his life. She didn't ever tell me, she didn't tell me all this till a lot later on. So I carried on doing what I was doing. So you were still out on the Saturday doing, night yeah, with the drink yeah, and yeah, the, the drugs and... Whatever, and, 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 and she was down south. Fasting and praying for me. Wow. And uh, she never told me. Um, and then um, I started to um, experience the Holy Spirit. Um, what did that look like? Um, well, I got to a point where I went up into my bedroom and I just like sat on my bed and I said, Lord, I don't know how to pray. I don't know what to say to you. I'm not going to pretend I know how to pray. I'm just going to sit here. And I just sat there in complete and utter silence. And um, then I felt this real warmth, this just rest like a blanket, just came and just rested on me like this. And I just felt complete and utter peace in my room. And I knew that I were encountering the Holy Spirit. So, and then one thing just led on to another, to where I'd run up into my bedroom just to listen to the Holy Spirit. And... Uh, the challenges and, and what you were telling me and what you were talking to me about. Give us some examples because I think everybody's ears will, you know, I know mine have, yeah. they prick up at the what he was telling me. Yeah. What did you, what did what were you hearing at that yeah. time? Because well, you knew you'd encountered the Holy Spirit. So what kind of things was he telling yeah, you? Well I, well, I knew I'd encountered the Holy Spirit. Uh, and um, so he just started to introduce himself and just um, uh, say, uh, so it was, um, I don't know, it was, I, I did a couple of, um, well, in, in, I started, I did a couple of cafe events um, and I would play it because I just started writing songs to, to, to God um, and uh, a friend of mine who was a journalist for, um, for Songs of Prayers, she was on a placement for Songs of Prayers, put my name forward because the, 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 the cafes were getting absolutely packed full. Um, so literally you couldn't get in the building, you couldn't get up the stairs. Uh, and I knew that God had organised all this. There's no way that I could have got these numbers or people. Or, but there was something that we were pulling people in. And then uh, Songs of Prayers heard about this and then they, they did a feature. I just want to backtrack slightly to see where we are at with the mm. Saturday night, with the drinking and the drugs and everything. At what point did that stop when you met the Holy Spirit? Yeah, straight away. So straight uh, away. Lots of things stopped. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, because yeah. it's interesting. So, yeah. you know, you've got this warmth, you feel this presence. Yeah, yeah. And he said to me, I'm going to give you a gift. This is the most important thing you could do in your ministry is love. Without love, you're nothing. And I felt this sense of love that I'd never felt before. And I knew that I could love other people through Christ's eyes. Uh, and that's really such a supernatural thing. It's a spiritual thing. 
Um, so your whole life was really kind of turned upside down because yeah. not only now you have a relationship with the Lord mm, mm. after that moment that you're crying out and yeah, you encounter yeah, the Holy Spirit, yeah. but now you've put your guitar, you've laid your guitar, your yeah, music, yeah. all the gifts that you have, yeah, yeah. and then God has somehow managed to do the cafe stuff, which led yeah, to songs yeah. of praise. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, I believe that you, you actually went on to America and Dubai. Tell yeah. us a little bit yeah. about that. Well, the, well these, these were trips out, but the, um, the, we went to uh, Philadelphia uh, because I went to see David Crowder, who was a well-known um, uh, Christian artist. And I absolutely fell in love with all the hoedown American-style music. Um, uh, and when I was out there, um, the lady that we went to stay with, she said she'd arranged a gig in, in Philadelphia. Um, so I was really looking forward to playing. And then we turned up. And it's just a, a learning curve, you know, and listening to him, to, to Christ. And um, the gig was cancelled. So I was really quite gutted about not playing. But then this piece came over me and said, I've got something else. And this, because this was all new to me, I didn't know all this. So, I mean, how long after, how long so from meeting the Holy Spirit to being in Philadelphia, roughly? All very short. Sure. All this has happened in two years. It's oh, all. Wow. <laughs> so, okay. so, um, so then we got on a bus. We decided to go on a bus to New York. And um, in the evening, I could hear music blasting out in, in Times Square in this Irish bar. So I went in. And um, there were a big band playing. And God spoke to me and said, get up and play. And I were arguing with God, you know, saying, you don't do that, you don't ask a band if you can play, you know. But after three failed attempts of going to the toilet instead of to the singer, I went up to him and said, I'd really like to play. And he said, well, you know, you're in, New you're in Times Square and this is my guitar, so uh, no. So I went back to sit on my seat, on the edge of my seat, but I knew he was going to change his mind because God had spoken to me. And the, the violinist said... Let him up, let him up. So anyway, I went up to t in Times Square and I did a song and they said, stay on, and I ended up doing a set in Times Square. But So it might sound little, but it was oh, like the it first... It doesn't at all. It was the first thing of, of realising whatever you think you've got and whatever you think you're going to be doing. You know, Christ has so much more, you know. But what would have happened if you hadn't been obedient? What would have happened exactly. if you'd gone and, uh, to the toilet and not gone and said to the guy... The, well, um, the, the biggest word that I've, I've come to realise in these this two years is the word obedience. Uh, and I said obedience leads to freedom. Because when you're obedient to Christ, it opens up so much. And you said something else, Paul, that, mm. you know, just in relation to that, that mm. right at the beginning, um, that... God had said to you about if you don't, he'll use somebody yeah. else. Mm. And I'm just thinking about you being in New York. Yeah. And he wanted you yeah. to play, but if you hadn't, could have been another night, could, could have been have. somebody yeah. completely different. Yeah. So yeah. that yeah. whole obedience, yeah. um, you know, it is so important. Is. Uh, okay, take us to Dubai because you've been playing in the desert to, yeah. I've got here Muslims who started to dance yeah. so, whilst you were worshipping the Lord. Yeah, well, we, we got, um, we went on one of these trips where you can go out into the desert. Uh -huh. I think it's on the King's Grounds there. And, um, uh, it was just us and, and another family. Uh, and then I think there were about five or six uh, Bedouin. Uh, and this were all new to me. And I was a bit afraid, you know, I'm a you know, Yorkshire lad stuck in the middle of a desert. <laughs> with a, uh, it's like a mandolin I was playing. And um, I just, I got it out. And I was just kind of, just worshipping, just to myself, just playing nice and quietly. Uh, and all the Bedouins came round. And we, they, they sat there and, and they were just checking me out. Right? <laughs> and then a guy called Malik, uh, one of the Bedouin guys, he said, where did you just go? He said, I saw you go somewhere. And I said, well, I'm, I'm lost. And I was quite afraid. But I said, I'm kind of lost in it. I'm lost in the, uh, the worship. Everything changed. They jumped up onto the feet. They were they were got the cameras out on the phone and they started filming me, and the whole atmosphere changed in, wow. in that moment. So it, that was another really special moment to me that, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit 
um, there's no boundaries for the Holy Spirit. You know, he, he'll speak to who he wants to speak to, you know. And he's given you visions as well. Um, you speak about healing for England. Yeah. Um, I had a, well, I was, uh, I was in the car uh, and I really felt the Holy Spirit say to me, go to a wood. So I went and I, I found a wood and I went with my friend and I, I sat on this log. And in front of these logs, there was there were dried up rivers, uh, you know where rivers used to be. Um, and she was looking the other way, and I saw this image, and and the rivers filled up, and they started to flow really fast, and they were going round me, and uh, and the the trees started to go to get pulled into the rivers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I said, and and she turned around and she said, "What have you just seen?" And I said, "I've just seen a vision." And what is it? So I explained the vision about the rivers and people getting caught up in the rivers. Um, And she, she, uh, you know, translated the vision for me. Um, And I really felt that it was a time of creativity and art and just giving back to the creator. The Um, gifts that he's given us. Yeah, you know, whatever gifts he's given us. Let's give them back. Because it's easy to kind of get wrapped up, especially, yeah. you know, I think for many people, um, if they've got a gift of singing or a gift in the, in the whole music mm. area, mm. Um, mm. it's easy to get caught up in the world and yeah. what the world has to yeah, offer. Because yeah. the world can, if you get the right breaks, offer you quite a lot and course, it can be quite yeah. enticing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it's like, as you say, you've got to be listening to the Holy Spirit do, yeah. and, and being yeah. obedient. Yeah. Um, You've got, you, you were mentioning beforehand that you, mm. you've heard angels. And yeah. this all sounds like we're, to date we're talking about the Holy Spirit mm. and this is all good and mm. all the rest of it. Mm. But you have had experience, yeah. shall we say, for want of a better word, of the other side of things yeah. as well. Tell us yeah. a little bit about that. Well, the, um, this has all happened in such a short space of time. Uh, so when I came back from America, um, there was a girl from the, from the past that was happy to see me and she came and said, I'm really... And I, I was in my house. Uh, she goes, I've really missed you. Uh, and she grabbed me and she, like, towards the stairs, you know. Uh, and then I heard four male voices. Uh, they were, like, angelic voices, but they were, not as you imagine with the, oh, but it was more like a, you know, like a folky sound even. Uh-huh. Uh, there were four voices just absolutely beautiful harmonies. Uh, and I was saying, where's the music coming from? Where's those voices coming from? And I was looking round, I went outside, uh, I would check the radio, I, were, I said, I can hear voices, and she goes, I, I can't hear any voices. Um, and then as she pulled me towards the stairs, I looked up the stairs, and there were, I didn't see anything, but there were just like such a energy coming down the stairs. Um, I said, we have to leave. Uh, and in, I left. in a bad way, energy. No, no, oh, no in a good, good way. way. It was just such a peaceful thing. Uh, and I just said, we just need to, to leave. So I just went out. And um, so, yeah, so I, I heard voices. And uh, I knew they were angelic because it was such a peaceful thing to me. Uh, it's a bit scary. Uh, yeah. But also there was a peace inside me that I didn't, I wasn't afraid, afraid. Do you feel that... Um or since you've had this experience mm. and since you've got your relationship with the Lord and you're doing all these things, because they're pretty spectacular, mm. it's not your, your kind of normal run of the yeah. mill. Yeah. How, how do you feel that the enemy has attacked yeah. you? Do you um, how do you see well, that? He attacks me in the, in the way um, he attacks. Um, you know, God, he's not going to waste time with things that he knows I can you're not gonna I don't struggle with. Mm. So he goes straight to the... You know, straight for the juggler, but yeah. um, I can see those things. And but also, uh, I have met the enemy a few times as well. Um, and when you say you've met the enemy, what? Yeah, I've. Um, I had. Uh, uh, I was. I was watching um, a TV program, um, uh, a Christian program, uh, and I. I knew that there was something. Uh, uh, it was a. As I was all watching the television, uh, there was a like a seven-foot circle appeared in my living room, 
Uh, it was seven about seven foot in diameter, and it looked a bit like an old TV, you know, that, that snow effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I knew, but I, and I get discernment. So when I'm dealing with these things, discernment comes, and it's like a runs up here, and I knew it was something negative. Um, and I didn't look at it, because uh, at this point I was so close yeah. to God. Uh -huh. I, I wasn't scared at all. No. Um, and my dog... Uh, jumped up onto all four legs. His, uh -huh. his legs were as stiff, uh -huh. and he was just barking at this thing. Uh, and I just said, in the name of Jesus, I said, I'm not interested. And he just went like this. Um, and then, not too long ago, um, what I'm doing in my ministry, um, uh, it's you know, it's more outside the church, you know, and mm -hmm. that's where I'm called to, you know, the pubs, the prisons, and. Um, this is what I do, and I see people coming to Christ through that. And uh, uh, as I, were, I had a vision, and I was walking up a hill, um, and there was a little boy on my right hand side with floppy hair. I could describe him in, in like a brown sack cloth on my right hand side, and he was saying, "The church hates you. The church hates everything you're doing. The church can't stand you." And but the effing and blinding and the, mm -hmm. the language I've never heard like that before yeah. in my life, you know, yeah. and I've been in some places. Yeah. I've not heard yeah. language like this. Totally and uh, and this this young lad, um, they were just walking beside, just digging at me uh -huh. as I was walking up this hill. And then it suddenly changed to, he was right in front of my face, uh -huh. literally, and I, all the, the air was thick. Uh -huh. And I, it was right there. And it changed from a boy's face to something very oh, dark. Uh -huh. uh, and I just looked at it and I said, in the name of Jesus, I said, Go away, and it was gone. Um, uh, so, yeah. So we 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 go from um, you know the power of the Holy Spirit all those years ago when you cried out in your bedroom, yeah. basically saying how you really didn't know how to pray, yeah. um, to God doing amazing things, um, Paul in your life. Yeah. Obviously, yeah. that doesn't come without its challenges yeah. because, yeah. as you say, the enemy is not going to waste time with people who are not a threat. And mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that you're going into the pubs and you're going into the prisons. Yeah, yeah. Is that just to play Christian? I don't mean just to play Christian music, but is that for music? Do you talk about the Lord? What what uh, happens there? Well, I, when I when I started out the ministry, I was saying, "Oh, I, I need to learn some banter, you know, between each song, yeah. <laughs> you know, some uh, some words." But God spoke to me and said, uh, "People speak too much. Just go out and do what well, you know. The songs themselves speak; they do all the talking." And, and what's the reaction you get from the public? Yeah, it's fantastic. Prisons? It's fantastic. I mean, the, what I, I realised we had something really special when I can go and play at a church on Sunday morning, my songs, and people are worshipping and, you know, it's a really good time. And then in the evening, I can go and play working men's club and it's full of big guys and covering tattoos, singing, going for it, shouting praise the Lord. So, because wow. uh, we do like a lot of like, the old gospel songs and... Uh, I saw the light and this train's bound for glory and people love it, you know, so... And I would imagine they come up to you, um, you know, afterwards and they want to hear your story as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, and um, I got interviewed on a local radio station and I played my song, uh, Trust in the Silence. Um, and after, the, after we'd um, shared on the, the channel, um, she gave her life to Christ, the, uh, the DJ, so... So these little stories, you know. It is, and you've had tremendous success because um, you've had a sellout um, at the Royal Hall in, in Harrogate as well, which yeah. um, definitely was God-ordained. Yeah, yeah. I'm just conscious of the fact that we're, we're coming to the end, Paul, yeah, yeah. and we're nearly out of time, but if people are sitting there, maybe somebody's just flicked on and they're watching and they're thinking, yeah, yeah the drink, the drugs, mm. that's mm. my life, and, mm. you know... Mm. That's all right for him sat there, but it's yeah, not going to yeah, work yeah. for me. What, yeah. what would you say to anybody who, yeah. who was really in that place where yeah. you were at? Yeah. Well, you know, God, the creator of this universe, is also the God of you personally as well. And he, he wants a relationship with everybody. Um, and he is there for everybody. It's just for you just call out to him yeah. and repent. Um and he'll meet you, because his promise is don't return void. And the funny thing is, um, what I what I love about your story, Paul, is there wasn't anybody saying repeat after me. There wasn't a script. 
No, this was no, you yeah. in your bedroom, yeah. basically telling God that you didn't know how to talk to him. Yeah, yeah. You'd yeah. gone to church for years, but yes. you didn't know how to yeah, talk yeah, to him. Yeah, well, yeah, because I, I wanted to uh, be completely and utterly honest. Yeah. And he met you where and you were at, me, which yeah. is lovely. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so fast forwarding now, we're at the, you know, at the present day. What, what, yeah. what does the future look like? We've got probably about less than a minute remaining. Right, but what does yeah. What does the future look like for you, Paul? What are you hoping for? Um, well, um, I believe um, that um, I'll, I'll keep you know writing and uh, and playing and uh, people you know, will come to meet Christ for themselves. And I'm just a vessel. I'm just a person that is there to spread um, God's love for everybody just through my music. And uh, long may that continue in well, however he decides. Just anything, because yeah. you've clearly been a blessing, Paul, to yeah. so many people and uh, clearly very gifted in some of the events and some of the places that God has taken to you to. So yeah. and we thank yeah. you today that he's brought you here to Revelation yeah, TV as well. Thank um, Paul, thank you very much. You've been a real blessing. Uh, hopefully Paul's story has blessed you and that there is always hope out there and we can never be too far down uh, that we can't look up and find Jesus just waiting for us to invite him into our lives or invite him in a bit more than we have been. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next edition of Testimony Time here at Revelation TV.